All right, I just wanted to, I thought it'd be a good idea to um, explain some of my um, influences and also a lot of the ideas I have for the future. I just wanted to kind of make this little video and share it with a couple of my close friends. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited about uh, the future, about different things I want to play with. And I use my Pinterest account as a way to kind of create this kind of wish list of things that I want to do in the future. So. For instance, um, let's go to Robot. And uh, I just collect different types of uh, robotic images that I like. But for instance, there's this one right here, which is just awesome. This is just a really cool line drawing. And I think what I would do, if I, what I will do, is build something like this in ZBrush and then translate it to a line drawing. You know, I just like the idea of uh, characters interacting with, um, with I guess, robots or future technology. And I love the pose, the character, with um, with this weird robot. So a lot of the poses I've been playing with lately, I would love to take it back into the science fiction world and just really, you know, have some fun coloring and just do some cool stuff. This one, again, I love the idea of, uh, of us, of real people integrating with uh, this kind of technology. It's almost like when you do a fantasy image, a fantasy image you can't really um, imagine yourself in there until you put a person you know, in there, you know, like it's like a, just like a normal cat and a normal person with a normal iPad with this totally, you know, whacked out um, character. You know, I'm just dying to do something like that. So that's on my to do list for sure. Um, but yeah, these are all, this is not just stuff that I collect, you know, as, you know, oh, I like this image, but I really want to do this. I love this idea, this character with all of her gear on. You know, of course, it's got a little creature up there. Um, and also the fact that it's like an old car translated into like a transformer. I love old cars. I love, 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 love old cars. That's something I want to play around with as well. So every single one of these um, I've picked for a specific reason. I really, really want to do this. I really want to do something like this where it's a realistic rendition that it was also damaged you know so it looks old and gritty that's something that's um, that i'm really passionate about as well um this is something that i used to look at when i was a kid or like teenager i had this book called sexy robot and back then this was all airbrushed just would take hours and hours and hours and hours to do now i could probably do it in uh, zbrush i can create something like this create this chrome texture and then in photoshop add a little bit of grain to make it feel like it was airbrushed on a you know a piece of illustration board, you know. So a lot of these things, I, there's no way, and I actually fantasize as a kid about airbrushing something this realistic. But now I can just build it in in the computer, and once it's done, I can repose it. You know, I'm not stuck with this one image, which is always uh, frustrating to me. Is when I have one single image, oh, it just drives me crazy. I love to be able to play around with different things. So, anyway, so these are all the robots or robot ideas that I want to explore. I love this character, this heavy character, you know, different body types. You know, I can't stand when everything is always that same um, female model look. I love different types of bodies. I love different types of bodies. I love this. Look at that. It's just tires, you know, so awesome. Such a kind of simple yet complicated image. Um, that's something I want to do when I get the new version of Keyshot which I don't know when it's coming out, but in another month or so, I might be able to actually do stuff like this, this realistic with this program called Keyshot. So I'm, ooh, I'm so excited about that. Um, and again, just the idea of going back and forth between something that's realistic and then something that's more cartoon um, just thrills me to death. You know, and I love these colors. I might use these colors as inspiration and, and just a little bit of the, of the um, type that they add on there is fantastic. So... I said I made myself a promise that if I upload anything to Pinterest, it's only stuff that I really, really want to do, that I would die not to have this image. And that really helped me to not just have 5 billion images, but really focus on the ones I want to work at. Like this one, I really love the idea of there's this character, and it's coming out of the fog. And as you go back 
into the distance, it starts to become more painterly. Now I can still do this in ZBrush. I can still build this in ZBrush, make a little bit of a painter um, look with um, you know some filters in, in Photoshop, and then just increase the filters more and more as you go back in space till you finally get to white. Again, on my to-do list, I definitely want to do it. So there's so much that I want to do. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it's kind of cool the stuff I'm playing with now, but I'm so much more excited about the future. Even something like this, like I can't draw a mech this good. There's no way in hell you're gonna have me draw something like this. But I can build it in ZBrush and then draw on top of it. I can print out the image. The, the the 3D sculpture and draw on top of it on my sketchbook or you can draw directly in the computer, which I don't feel that comfortable with. So I would probably print out my uh, robots in different um, body positions and then just roughly sketch over them. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer. You know, once you have the character built, it's so easy. Now, some people draw so well that they can actually just draw this out of their head. That's not me. Um... And then there's some, some cool compositions. Look at that. So crazy. I love what the interaction between the wire, the idea that she's pulling her hair, but it's actually wire and it's a robot. I think that's just incredible. Um, there's so many awesome people out there. So many things that I want to try that, you know, just something like this is so simple. This is actually a friend of mine, but this is a, kind of like an ape. You know, an ape in the, in, the, in the body position of a robot. Or the robot in the body position of an ape, I should say. Um, but yeah, this is just my robot collection, you know, so many things, even this, taking a, an idea and then turning it into a, a magazine cover, you know, literally just for the heck of it, why not, you know what I mean, why not, playing around with the type, magic. and then later on, who knows, maybe, you know, my work, my work might end up on a magazine cover, it's like when you do something, you kind of project that out to the world. You make that wish, and then hopefully, probably, that wish will happen. You know, and there's this stuff too. So what I was thinking about doing, even with this, is uh, building some crazy stuff again in ZBrush, and then um, printing it out, doing a 3D print. If I were to print this out, I may build some of these pieces. And other things, I can just buy it as a toy. I even have this toy. You know, so it could be part toy, part 3D print. You know, and then painting it and look all rusted and cool. You know, so that's something else to do. So it's like it's almost like a lifetime's a lifetime worth of work. But and I think if I just keep going and working every minute of the day, that I'll get all this stuff done. And again, this is another thing that could be three D and then um, drawn on top of and turning it into like a three D slash two D type of a thing. Because for me, I really hate following perspective I hate it with a passion it just it can it constrains me so much it strangles my soul so I'd rather just build it and then and then trace off of the image you know why not why struggle with perspective you know I'm not good at it I don't plan on being good at it and I just I would rather do it a much more fun way personally perspective makes me a very angry person um, so yeah, these are just all ideas um, for future, you know, artwork. Even something as goofy as this, taking your image and then turning it into uh, a blueprint, you know, but actually explaining to people all the different pieces. That's great for a portfolio. Anyway, if you want to do concept design for film, you got to know how to explain your craziness. So I have so much stuff just in the world of robot that, you know, there's no lack of inspiration. When I was a kid, I had none of this. You know, I would just sit in front of my desk, stare at a blank piece of paper, and just be like, uh, I don't know what to do. Now, all I have to do is open up my Pinterest account, and I'm, I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. You know, there's so much to play around with. So many things to do. So this is just a robot. And then, let's go to probably maybe one or two more. There's another one called Fantasy Worlds. And this is another one that I'm really excited to get into. I'm excited about all these things, but this one especially, Fantasy Worlds, because the idea is to take my fantasy imagery and put it in a world where there's something happening. You know, there's an expression, there's a character, there's people here, they're interacting with a monster. This guy just cut the tentacles off and he's screaming. 
So that's the idea that I want to do next, which I don't do that much at all, which is a world. Something is happening in the world. You know, she's got her goggles. She's looking over here. You know, the idea, that's why everything that I collected in fantasy worlds is based on uh, kind of like a story, something happening. There's an exciting moment that happened. You know, I think this is a little cheesy, but I like the idea of action of emotion happening, of movement, you know. So this is something that, you know, is on my to-do list. This is another reason why I started quitting some of my jobs is because I don't want to take time away from this stuff, you know. Um, this is so exciting to me. You know, she's screaming and there's all, thing, all kinds of things happening, you know. Um, that's very important that I try to carve out as much time as I can um, so that I can do this stuff, so that the, the work that I get hired for in the future, or the work that I do, is going to be based on this stuff, but I have to have it in my portfolio, I have to have it uploaded online, otherwise people are not going to know to hire me, they're not going to even know that I can do it, I'm not even sure if I can do it, I think I can do it, but I'm not sure, so, um, I need to start doing this stuff, you know, even this for scale, it's like an old master painting, and the light, the lighting is just gorgeous, great sense of scale, you know, as another thing is like, I want to create large worlds, you know, and uh, you can say that, you can say anything you want, but until you actually show these little characters walking around in this world, people aren't going to listen to you. Why should they listen to you? Everybody has ideas, you know, everybody in the world has ideas. But the important thing is how can you take those ideas and make them a reality, you know, so that people can people can buy into your idea you know look at that imagine you know creating this as a full-size sculpture you know or a, a scene in a movie where this character is just walking along and that's it it's all you need you know um, and I can get so much information from this I can get so much information um, just based on color uh, design you know idea and most of the time when I take an idea like, let's say I take this idea, right? I'll start sculpting this or drawing it. But halfway through, my mind wanders. <laughs> I start to go in different directions. And by the end, a lot of times I'll forget that this was the original inspiration. So I'm not too worried about copying people's work because my mind wanders so much that, you know, most of the time, even the, the original artist who made the work doesn't even recognize that you know, they were the inspiration. I love this character. It's like a normal person on a normal scooter, and yet when you pan down, it's this walking robot thing. I love that. I love the normal world, and then mixing it with the strangeness. You know, even that's great. Look at all this junk that she's sitting on. It's so awesome. There's piles and piles of junk. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is my one of my biggest influences, believe it or not. When I was a kid, I would stare at this image. It was like in the back of a comic book, and I would just look at it and look at it and look at it. There was something that was calling to me back then as a little kid. I, I had to I had to deal with this image, you know, these giant dogs, these robot dogs. This is Sid Mead, who's an incredible, you know, visionary. Um, but now I still love it. You know, years later, just a sense of um, light. You know, these characters, our main characters, our people are, are small and they're in shadow. And they have this overall yellow color scheme, like um, almost like Los Angeles colors. And, uh, and tiny, tiny little people here. But the thing is, they're running like crazy and people are screaming. There's this sense of you're, you're caught in the moment. That's something that's not in my artwork yet, but I really, really want to get it in there. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's on the way, hopefully. Yeah, but now with the with the idea of ZBrush, I could create one dog, and then position it five different ways, render it in KeyShot, and then bring it into Photoshop, paint it up, and you're done. You know, I could even add a little bit of texture to make it look like a gouache painting. So, um, so it doesn't really matter how Sid Mead did it. It doesn't matter. It just matters how how can I do that easily and as fast as possible. You know. I want to create artwork fast. I don't want to spend all week, all month long painting. I just want to crank it out, make it look like a painting, but fast. I love this. This is something I never use pink. You never see, hardly ever see pink in my artwork. 
but I love it. I love it. I don't like her, but I love this whole idea of um, maybe playing around with pink. Why not? Especially if we're dealing with like this kind of ugly robot. So it has a nice sense of contrast. So anyway, these are my. This is uh, called Fantasy Worlds, and this is also the type of movies I want to make someday. You know, I keep saying I want to make these movies, but um, you have to start small. You have to start doing an image. And then once that image is done, you do a couple more images. Then you make that image move a little bit. Then you start with the script. And you start writing a story. You know, uh, it doesn't happen automatically. Um, it's happened longer for me because I just, I'm so distracted by so many things. I love drawing. I love sculpture. Um, and I love doing stuff with photography. So the film work is not my only passion. I have so many other things I love doing. And I, I can't, I have to... I'm trying to get myself not to apologize about that. It's all right. You know, I, I, I want to do a lot of things. I do want to be a filmmaker. I want to be a full-time filmmaker. Um, the problem is I'm just having so much fun with the, the individual images. So anyway, yeah, I got a lot of ideas. I can't wait. Can't wait to make these movies. So that's Fantasy Worlds. Um, I could go through each and every folder, really. But let's just pick the obvious ones. So I got bats. I love bats. The funny thing about Pinterest is it shows you what you're interested in. You know, I've got 15 images of bats I've got 246 images of robots, so obviously I like robots more than anything else, you know. Um, tin, there's some statues and things, of course I love doing statues. Um, vehicles, Ian McKegg is uh, one of my, um, I love his work, I love his work to death. I love rust, I love going to an old shipyard or walking along the pier and just staring at the old rusty, um, boats and stuff like that when i'm on the highway i love studying the back of garbage trucks you know it's just it's i just love this stuff to death and i also love atmosphere you know how things are really close and colorful then they how they go back in in the fog or in the atmosphere you know and he does he's just like a master of that so you know ian mckeg i can just collect all of his work you know but this is the type of stuff that makes me very happy is once you have an idea done you weather it so it feels like it's been around for a million years you know it's just uh, I don't know I just love it I love it when I grew growing up um, my grandfather worked in a hardware store so I was kind of surrounded by old hardware and rust and stuff like that we all we always had in our basement and uh, I don't know maybe it was an influence maybe I just was born loving rust I don't I'm not sure but um yeah, it's it's uh this is another big influence on me when I was when I was in high school Liberator, which is a very harsh, very brutal um type of artwork, like this type of stuff. You know, he always had this large man with this small woman. Um and that's always been an interest to me. And uh he had a whole story in um in heavy metal. And it was just this very deviant you know, brutal, um, you know, kind of like a New York City type of thing. But I always loved the style. I love the, the, um, what you call it? Just the brutal, I don't know, reality of it. This R-rated, or you know, type of story. People on drugs and all these violence and stuff like that. And um, I ended up repurchasing these comic books recently. And I need to get this out of my system. I can't just keep liking it. I have to somehow recreate it, recreate that grungy uh, world. And um, again, with uh, with the aid of the computer, I can probably do that. This was originally, I think this stuff was rendered in marker, you know, and drawn. I couldn't do that. I mean, I guess I could, but I just, again, I just don't like the idea of the character only existing in one position. So I'd much rather, much rather build it so that I can turn it later on. You know, it's like a I always think of a drawing sometimes as like a toy that you can't play with, which is kind of funny. But, um, so yeah, so that's Liberator. Another one is Zora, another high school influence. Um, 
is Zora, you know. Again, I had to sneak this stuff in. My grandparents would beat the crap out of me if they saw that I had this stuff. So everything was kind of, you know, sneaked into the house. But we had these, you know, nude characters. But also just this beautiful, ornate backgrounds that they would come up with, you know. Just the design. I just love the design. I love it, you know. There's something cool. I love the um, typography and... The words, although a lot of times, I think, I don't know if it was in French, but I guess it was in English, but just these nude figures just walking around, but with these beautiful orga organic backgrounds, I still love this stuff. I still need to get this out of my system, you know. Certain things you love for so many years, you have to deal with it. You can't just, you know, give it away. I also like the idea of, um, you know, a comic book. Isn't that cool? You know, a story simple story with words you know I want to do that I keep I do I've done it a little bit but not enough so, so that's another one that I want to do so all this stuff is want 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 um, and then where's my favorite this is dolls my favorite one one of my favorites I guess they're all my favorites but this idea of a little doll you know I used to have a fantasy when I was a kid of finding this little girl like a maybe an adult but small like the size of a Barbie doll I would take care of her and she would be tiny you know like a tiny person there was a, a film I saw called The Borrowers when I was a kid and it was about this boy who finds these little people under a floorboard in his bedroom and he takes care of these little people and I, I for some reason that is fixated me to this day and I looked around my room and it's full of little people I'm still sculpting these little characters that are about Barbie size so I have this fascination with I think we all do we all have fascinations with this and that when we're kids and and then we forget about it when we're adults when we we decide not to become artists but if you're an artist you can tap into this stuff and and just enjoy uh staying a kid but enjoy taking those fantasies that you have as a kid and make it a reality, you know. I would love. I mean, I would love to just buy this. This this probably cost about, I don't know, five to ten thousand dollars, maybe more, to buy this toy, right? If I was a millionaire, I would buy them in a heartbeat. But I'm not a millionaire, so I need to make them. But I can make them myself, you know. I can at least try. And the thing is, when I when you try to make something, you might not get it perfectly like this, but you can actually make something that's even more you, because it's coming out of your hands and out of your mind. And it kind of turns into something uh, even better for you, you know. Um, so that's another thing I want to do is these dolls. I want to print out these dolls. And, uh, you know, this is another thing that I find. I don't know why I like it. I really don't. But um, I think these are sculptures, but they might as well be 3D scans. And I want to do more of this. Get, like, people I know, friends, and scan them and then have them in the computer as a toy that I can play with, you know. Um, but I can put them into my fantasy world is to scan uh, a real person, you know. And there's something about, you know, a real person. Even this, here's the person. But when you take them and bring them into this kind of porcelain white world, it's it's slightly, it's it's them and it's more than them, you know. I would love to have a studio full of, life-size people and small people all done in white you know in these this normal is this someone standing in their underwear it's not a fantasy character it's very normal but there's something about the normal world that's then represented in sculpture i think this is the direction i need to go with my artwork actually is to be less distorted and more real or at least have it as part of my world i guess i mean i could i could definitely keep doing the more distorted stuff but this is another thing that's huge influence on me. Then there's this guy, uh, Yamato. Um, his stuff is very dark. Yeah, it's kind of creepy, but I love the juxtaposition that he plays with. You know, again, very normal characters, but, you know, put them in these kind of terrible situations, you know, or scary situations. You know, I, I think I find that very interesting to me as well. And also the beauty and the horror. You know, like this is a perfect example. It's beautiful, it's elegant, it's delicate, and it's horrific. You know, something I wanted to do. I was a kid, I, I was thinking of becoming a doctor. 
I, I was interested in anatomy and all that stuff. And I'm still playing with anatomy, like anatomy, anatomy, not just muscles and bones, but organs and veins and lungs and all that type of stuff. And then mixing it up with something really beautiful. Why not? Why not? That's actually something I'm working on right now, is a sculpture uh, of that. So this is a whole other kind of graphic style. But this, I like playing with things that scare me. You know, this stuff scares me. I don't, I don't like the idea of people being tied up. It scares me. I don't like, I don't like that dark world. You know, um, but sometimes it's it's good to face your nightmares. It's good to face what you're afraid of. That can also be as big an inspiration as what you're uh, attracted to, what you're passionate about, what you desire, you know. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of pass along um, some of the things that influence me. And sometimes it's easier um, it's easier to explain uh, to explain this type of stuff when you just make a little video. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that you guys that see this, maybe you do your own video. How awesome would that be? And we could all share our videos and share what we're passionate about and explain it a little bit. You know, um, I learn a lot from hearing about other people, not only talking about their artwork, but um, what they like about certain artists, what influences them, and uh, what they want to do in the future. And if we can have this kind of dialogue, talking with each other back and forth, who knows, we may be able to help each other out with, oh, I have an idea that, that you can use, or I have a piece of artwork that you would love. And having this kind of, you know, this group of people that share, that inspire each other, you know, even if we're on other sides of the world or whatever, whatever. But just this kind of sharing inspirational thing has become really exciting to me. So anyway, I wanted to share some of this with you.